That's the cold wind blowing. Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate stopping on by. This time I'm coming at you to review the motion picture by the name of Cold Pursuit. This is a movie that came out in, when the hell did it came out in? It looks like it came out in 2019 and I can remember when trailers popped up on online for this title and being kind of interested, not because of Liam Neeson revenge movie, but just because living in Minnesota, which is, I don't know, half the year, it seems like it's, you know, three quarters of the year frozen tundra, but it's probably just like, you know, maybe, I don't know, a third of the, I don't know, it, it's a long time uh, in Minnesota. Being a frozen tundra, this is the Blu-ray slash DVD, I guess I don't have to sit there and hold it. Living in a part of the world that's a frozen tundra for many months on end, just like this winter, just like right now. I tend to gravitate towards these movies, as you may or may not know. I generally only watch these movies during the winter. It's kind of a thing, it's kind of a way to, I don't know, I don't know why it would be therapeutic to help me try to get through the winter, but maybe watching a movie about the frozen tundra that's currently going on outside somehow therapeutic, I don't know why. I think you'd want to watch, like I said before in other videos, you know, Baywatch or, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean or something that, you know, takes place in the warm weather during the cold weather. But one of the reasons why I watch movies like this in the cold weather is because who the hell wants to watch movies like this in the warm weather? But anyway, enough of that. On to my review of Cold Pursuit. As I was saying, back when I saw the trailers for this online and stuff, I was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. I'll probably end up with the Blu-ray when it comes down cheap enough. It, I did manage to get the Blu-ray um, relatively cheap. I don't know if it was like 5 or $6 brand new on that one site that's, you know, named after a river or a certain rainforest or whatever. Having just seen it, I thought it only made sense to stop on by, especially since it's still a frozen tundra where I am, and let you guys know what I thought of it. Um, obviously this is made, I don't know when the Liam Neeson revenge movie trend really started, but obviously this is just a continuation of that. I, from what I understand, he made this, maybe it started with, started with the Taken movies. I've never seen or been any interest, had any interest whatsoever in the Taken movies. Never, never seen any of them, never interested in any of the Liam Neeson revenge movies. The only reason I watched this is once again because of the Frozen Tundra aspect. I was just curious. I tend to gravitate towards these, especially this time of year. Having seen it, I did think it, I do think it is relatively interesting. It's kind of a bummer, you know. I, I really, you know, a lot, I know a lot of young people don't mind, but I, you know, this movie being shot digitally, most likely, I don't know. I guess that just kind of shows my age. But you know, a lot of the aspects of this movie, it depends on really, you know, what's going on or, or whatever. But a lot of the digital photography really doesn't do a whole hell of a lot for me. Also, you can tell that most likely some of the exterior winter stuff and the other kinds of stuff and maybe the plow hitting the jeep and stuff are CG enhanced events, things that aren't um, all natural and all real on screen but things that are maybe certain winter weather aspects or certain car stunt aspects are enhanced or completely faked with CGI which is always a bummer in my opinion premise of this movie, if you don't know, just revolves around Liam Neeson. Uh, he's married to Laura Dern, and I gotta say, they have like the coolest log cabin house in this movie. It takes place in Colorado, I want to say. Obviously a very snowy part of the year during the winter, and this is just like, you know, Liam Neeson is like this snow removal guy, this snow plow driver, snow removal guy for this town, I think, more or less, and he just plows this one stretch of road every day. You know, and at the beginning of the movie, he wins this, like, award of best, I don't know, best citizen of the week or day or year or month or whatever the hell he wins. It doesn't really matter. But what ends up happening early on in the movie is Liam Neeson's son ends up being kidnapped and killed. And we find out later that the people who did it were this, like, you know, evil drug cartel guy who's run by this one bad guy, evil kind of bad guy, who's got this son who, you can tell he probably loves his son, but he's this guy so cold and calculating that he's, he, you know, he's inter he cares about his son in, in regards to what he his son eats and stuff like that, and quote-unquote healthy diet or whatever, but it's a, that's pretty much where it ends. It's kind of like if Spock had a, had a son, maybe that, you know, he'd be like the same way. This dad is very cold and you know, this guy being the head of this whatever, organized crime, drug, kingpin, whatever going on. It's, I think he also lives in the same area. Um, you know, he's got this son in, in whatever private grade school or whatever. And 
I do find this movie to be kind of interesting, the, the bits with, you know, the son, you know, the son of the bad guy or whatever and stuff. I'll talk maybe a little bit more about that later, but Liam Neeson's son ends up being kidnapped and killed along with his buddy. They, I don't know if they, if they move drugs for these guys. I'm not exactly sure, having seen it only once, exactly sure why they killed him, but they killed him and Liam Neeson finds out about this early on and it's, you know, it's probably very much like all the other Liam Neeson revenge movies, I would imagine. He starts at the bottom with this one bad guy and, you know, beats the shit out of him and get more info to get to the next bad guy. He's just working his way up from the bottom up with the this, you know, evil kingpin guy's goons or whatever. And it one thing this movie does, this movie actually has a kind of a, you know, well, not kind of a, but a very more or less, uh, maybe a black comedy kind of a, an aspect to it where... Every time Liam Neeson kills someone, or I think it, just any time anyone dies, maybe, or Liam Neeson kills someone, they'll put, like, a cross or whatever religion the particular character is, and they'll say the character's name and his nickname, you know, kind of like. And that becomes something that they do throughout the course of the movie. Honestly, when when the movie first began, you're kind of like, is this what, you know, we see in credits all the way through the movie? Oh, no, these must be the character's names and then the character's nicknames. Honestly, if I'm being perfectly honest, it perhaps gets a little old and repetitive as the movie wears on halfway point to the towards the end or whatever, but I'll give the movie credit for doing something a little different when, you know, the bad guys die to put a little memoriam, whatever the hell, however the hell that's said, just like little thing on the screen. It's a very kind of a comedic kind of an aspect. So, you know, that's the premise of this movie. The first, I don't know what, 30 minutes is kind of like that. Like Liam Neeson working his way up the ladders towards the, the boss to get the ultimate revenge on the boss. But, um, and the movie is actually kind of fun up until the point where, I don't know if it's like halfway through. The, this movie is almost two hours long. So I'm going to get to, you know, my, my problem with the movie right now, which is basically, I don't know if it's somewhere around the, uh, around the hour mark, like halfway through the movie where... What ends up happening is is there's this uh, this Indian kind of you know mob drug running kingpin boss guy gets involved. There's some comedic aspects of this movie because Liam Neeson's brother, played by William Forsyth, and oh my gosh, he got old and kind of fat, didn't he? But I remember William Forsyth from you know late '80s, early '90s, raising Arizona, Dick Tracy, career opportunities. Was it Out for Justice, things like that. William Forsyth was such a badass, like in Out for Justice and stuff. But come to think of it, he was pretty fat even back then, so I guess he's just kind of a fattish guy or whatever. But it's kind of interesting seeing, seeing William Forsyth in 2019 or 2018 when this movie was presumably filmed. But he plays the brother of Liam Neeson. He's also, I think, like an ex I don't know what the hell he was into some crime stuff. So he recommends that... He hires, you know, Liam Neeson hires someone to kill the, the top baddie, and that guy, he hires, his, goes to the top baddie and says, this guy offered, to, or, you know, someone's offered to kill a certain, you know, or offered me a certain amount of money to kill you, you know, you, are you interested in knowing who it is, and you're going to pay me more or whatever, and it's just kind of goofy, and this this starts the, 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 I don't know, the confusion in this movie, where basically then the bad guy just kills him, and then... I think after getting the the family name of this guy, who of course they look into it and they they you know his brother. Oh, I know the con the, the 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 connection. The William Forsyth character used to work for this big top bad guy. So when the last name is mentioned, they're like, oh my God, that's this wingman, you know, who gets his who gets his nickname from Top Gun. That's William Forsyth. So they end up mistaking him for Liam Neeson. They kill him. Um, I can't remember how the how the Indians come into play, but regardless, to make this review a little not as long as it otherwise could be, I'll just simply say that there, you know, this this Indian quote unquote cartel or tribe or whatever, this crime boss Indian, like you know, Native American Indian family, ends up being mistakenly drawn into the situation as well when they have nothing to do with any of it. It's just like a misunderstanding sometime in the halfway point of the movie this misunderstanding happens and it becomes this you know these this north you know this native american uh frickin versus these other you know group of crime people versus the other group of crime people who actually had liam neeson's son killed so I, in my opinion this movie was off to a really great start but when they start doing the stuff with you know 
I'll admit the you know the 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 guy who was supposed to who Liam Neeson hired to kill the bad guy going to the bad guy to try to get more money from him and sell him the name of Liam Neeson or whatever was interesting. But then when like the Native Americans you know get involved and stuff, it's just like oh my God, they're making this movie more convoluted in my opinion and and just uh, a diff comp more complicated than it needs to be. But that's just my opinion. If, if you've seen this movie and you like the, you know, the movie is kind of tongue-in-cheek and stuff. And if you like, I can understand people liking the aspects of the, just the confusion and the the whole entire, um, you know, Native American crime situation, your crime family, whatever the hell you want to call it, organization being drug into the situation when it actually has nothing to do with them at all. So by the end of the movie, it's kind of like, you know, those two crimes, you know, the Native American crime outfit and the other crime outfit that actually had Liam Neeson's son killed end up, you know, kind of shooting it out at the very end and Liam Neeson's obviously on the side of, well, he's on his own side, but which also happens to be, I guess, the side of the, the Native Americans. And, and throughout the, oh, I remember now, throughout the course of the movie, halfway through or whatever, sometime after halfway through, uh, they actually kill one of the, you know, the, the Native, the, the, the guy who's like the Native American, uh, the head of that organization they actually kill his kids so it's kind of like Liam Neeson and that guy kind of have the same situation where both of their sons were destroyed or killed and <laughs> destroyed and uh, some towards the end of the movie Liam Neeson kidnaps the, the bad guys who had his son killed his kid and god this is confusing but and it's interesting how Liam Neeson is actually more of a good dad to the kid than you know his own dad is and stuff like that and it makes you wonder if it's kind of like a son for a son like you killed mine so I'm gonna steal yours and raise yours they don't really go into it but to, to let you guys know about the sense of humor of this movie there's a part where you know Liam Neeson having kidnapped the, the drug you know the bad guy who had his son killed his kid he the, the kid wants him to read him a story or tell him a story before bed and he doesn't really know any stories or have any books so he reads him like a manual for the big snowblower machine or something like that which is actually I actually appreciated that humor. I thought that was actually funny. We're going to read you the freaking manual for the snow removal, big snow, remo snow removal vehicle or whatever the hell he's reading the manual of. I thought that was actually funny and honestly, surprisingly an endearing scene, honestly. And uh, I really like the kid, the, the, the kid they got to play, the kid, the, the son of the, the main bad guy in this movie, I thought was really great casting. I really love that you know kid's performance and his character in the movie and honestly it's really impressive to me that they have that character the, the little kid in the movie who's the son of the bad guy actually likes classical music in the movie which is a plot point that I really really appreciated because when I was a kid you know 13 14 years old I, I was the same way I was like 13 I was really primarily listening to classical music when I was 14 I also was but then I got into like you know swing swing time big band jazz stuff and, and this and that but I really appreciated that um, I really like the, the the kid of the you know the kid who plays the kid, <laughs> and just that aspect. The, the kid's kind of smart, you know, and the kid actually really taking to Liam Neeson was kind of a unexpected, you know, endearing, sweet kind of aspect. And the kid, you know, obviously the the dad, you know, the kid's dad will be killed at the end of the movie. And I guess I don't know. They they they, they don't say if they're gonna, you know, if he's gonna adopt the kid or anything like that, but. Those are some elements I did appreciate about the movie. So there's a lot of, you know, basically winter, freaking Colorado winter, out ex exterior snow stuff. Like I say, a lot of it, it's, it's hard to say. It seems like some of it is faked with CG snow or CG, you know, shots of snow-covered roads or whatever, but it's hard to tell. I think not all of it, All I don't think all of the snow, exterior snow shots of just the snow tundra stuff is real. Hopefully some of it's real. Hopefully it wasn't filmed in the summer and you know, like, add it on later. I'm sure a lot of the snow stuff is probably real. and That's one of the main reasons, honestly, I got it. I didn't watch this on the projector with the 5.1 surround. I just watched it on the TV. I imagine it would probably sound relatively good with all the wind and the blizzard stuff like that. Um, star rating for this movie, I'll go as high as, uh, I'll go, uh, we'll go two and a half stars out of four stars for Cold Pursuit. I'm not exactly sure why it's called Cold Pursuit. I mean, there it really isn't a pursuit in this movie per se. Maybe Cold Vengeance or something would have been a better title probably if, if I were in charge, which unfortunately I'm not. Maybe Cold Cold Vengeance or 
you know, cold revenge, tagline revenge is a dish best served cold. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm just thinking this stuff up like that, which I think is better ideas than the actual movie, um, Cold Pursuit. Is there a, no, there's no tagline or anything like that on the Blu-ray case, but yeah, it's a movie that if you can see it for cheap or for free, I would recommend seeing it. I do, you know, don't get me wrong, I appreciate the movie's, you know, humorous sensibilities. There's also, you know, there's other stuff that happens that I didn't mention or that I forgot to mention or whatever. It's humorous stuff. You know, the, the movie does have a, a, a kind of a dark humor aspect about it. I mean, it's a movie, a revenge movie, and it doesn't obviously take itself 100% seriously. And I do, I do appreciate the humorous aspects of the movie. It's worth noting that, that, you know, the humor wasn't lost on me or I wasn't all grumpy and just like, ah, the humor was dumb. I appreciated a lot of the, the humor in the movie and the, the aspect of, uh, you know, really humanizing, you know, even though the, the main bad guy was bad and stuff and it was kind of, you know, nice how he at least, maybe he wasn't the best dad in the world, but at least he kind of, I don't know, tried to care about what his son ate, I guess, you know, in a very interesting way that wouldn't interest the kid at all. But anyway, I'm going on and on and on. I guess that'll pretty much be my review for Cold Pursuit. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, we'll catch you on the next one.